Next, we shall learn how manpower planning and staffing decisions can affect capacity, utilization, and productivity. Let's examine again our five-man process with an hourly capacity of 12 units. Suppose we add another operator to station A, thereby reducing its cycle time to one minute and doubling its capacity to 60. Since the station C remains as the bottleneck, the process capacity remains the same at 12 units per hour. Increasing the number of operators of the non-bottleneck workstation will not increase overall process capacity. Without process analysis, you may inadvertently approve requisitions for additional staff from non-bottleneck departments in your company. The result will be overstaffing without any increase in output or capacity. Back to our original process. This time, let's add another operator to bottleneck station C. Note that its cycle time is cut to 2.5 minutes and the bottleneck shifts to station E, now with the longest cycle time of 4 minutes. Process capacity now goes up from 12 to 15 units. The principle is that adding more operators to the bottleneck workstation always increases process capacity. You may wonder how two operators can work together in one workstation. There are two methods, the non-sharing or parallel method and the sharing method or sequential method. Let's examine the first method. Here you set up a second workstation that's exactly the same as station C. Each one, let's call them station C1 and C2, will have an operator and a 5-minute cycle time. The new station C made up of substation C1 and C2, can now work on two units at the same time. Its capacity per hour will be the sum of those of the two operators working in parallel, or 24 units per hour, which is equivalent to a cycle time of 2.5 minutes per unit. Let's now look at the sequential method. Here the two operators will share equally the tasks within the workstation C. Station C1 performs the first set of tasks, then passes the unit on to Station C2, which does the second and final set. Since Station C has a 5-minute cycle time, C1 and C2 will each have a 2.5-minute cycle time. Note that unlike the first method, the new Station C here can accept only one unit at a time, but both C1 and C2 will always be busy working on one unit each. In other words, Station C will now have two units inside at any time. It will output one unit every 2.5 minutes and therefore have a capacity of 24 units per hour, as in Method 1. So whether you use Method 1 or 2, the new cycle time and capacity will be the same. You may have noticed in both methods, each unit will still undergo 5 minutes of processing in Workstation C just like before when it had one operator. The workstation lead time is not affected by the number of its operators. This process of constant lead time becomes clearer if we redraw our process using method 2. Notice that every unit will still have to go through 15 minutes of processing even after we added an operator to the process. Though lead time is constant, Utilization can improve by adding manpower. With a faster process cycle time of 4 minutes and with 6 operators, here we see that direct labor utilization goes up from 60% to 62.5%. From this slide, we can see that the team, though bigger now, is more busy and more productive than before. To conclude, through process analysis, we have learned that increasing bottleneck capacity may result in a larger percentage increase in overall capacity. Let's now learn the concept of line balancing. Notice that because 